U.S. intelligence indicating Iran was behind the weekend attack on major oil sites in Saudi Arabia. President Trump saying he wants to avoid a wider conflict. And joining us now is Hogan Gidley, White House Deputy Press Secretary. Hogan, good morning to you. A lot to get to. Let's start with Iran. What is President Trump's next move when it comes to, to Iran? Well, listen, we are working with our partners and allies in the region, uh, looking at all of the evidence, all of the information. Uh, Saudi Arabia is conducting its own investigation, as you well know. And the president mentioned yesterday from the Oval Office that he thinks it's likely uh, that this could be the doing of Iran. But we don't have any announcement yet. And if we're going to make that declaration, uh, he wants to be ironclad in the evidence and he wants to make the case to Congress and the American people uh, just who's at fault here. The fact is, regardless of this attack, Iran has been involved in terrorist behavior, malign activity for 40 plus years. Uh, we have sanctioned them and put a maximum pressure campaign on Iran like no other administration in history. And their economy is teetering on the verge of collapse, all because this president refuses to let them continue to proffer death and destruction across the globe, and hopefully it brings them to the table to have a discussion so that they, can, so that they eventually will stop uh, what they're doing. So that last answer means that he still wants to talk to them. D does he still want a meeting with Iran, Hogan? Well, there's no meeting scheduled. Obviously, we'll be at UNGA, uh, I think, at the end of uh, or the beginning of next week. Nothing scheduled on the books right now. Look, as the president of the United States, uh, he is obligated to try and find peace where he can. But uh, he's not going to release or, or raise or lift sanctions on Iran, considering what they've been a party to for the last 40 years. And that hasn't changed. All right. United Nations General Assembly is UNGA. That's in New York next week. And we'll see you here when that arrives here. The president has made it very clear um, how he feels about that New York Times report about Justice Brett Kavanaugh, which has now been corrected by the New York Times to include a key detail. What is the president saying about that this morning? It's just nothing new, sadly, by the mainstream media and especially the New York Times. Time and time again, what we see from journalists across this country is they masquerade opinion and editorializing as fact. And if they want to attack this president or this administration without real information, just by offering their opinion, they can do that on the opinion pages. There is a spot dedicated to those opinions in all of these publications, in all of these newscasts. But when they put it in front of the American people as real news, it's a disservice to the American people, but it's also an affront to real journalism. People deserve to listen to facts and information from their quote unquote news outlets. And time and time again, that's just not what they're getting. Uh, the First Amendment of the United States affords uh, the freedom of press. And as we're here in Constitution Week, uh, National Constitution Week, it should be, uh, you know, imparted, I guess, or, or it should, uh, we should have the opportunity to remind journalists just the big responsibility that carries with it, to offer information to the American people without bias, without opinion, uh, and just the facts. And we don't get that time and time again. It's sad that the, uh, the journalists have fallen this far. And if you go look at their Twitter feed, you see the snark, you see the rancor. It's not news anymore. And that's why the American people don't trust the media and don't like the product two, they're two given other day things to day this. out. Has the president spoken to Brett Kavanaugh? Has he reached out to him or not since this erupted? Not to, not to my knowledge, but he's made his opinions very okay. clear second, on the coverage Brett Kavanaugh has received. Point, I want you to react to this. Ayanna Presley, the Democratic congresswoman from Massachusetts, said this last night. All right, here it is on the screen. Sexual predators do not deserve a seat on the nation's highest court. And Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation process set a dangerous precedent. We must demand justice for survivors and hold Kavanaugh accountable for his action. She, too, is pushing for some level of impeachment. What's the White House think about that? It's absolutely ridiculous. There's no evidence you're trying to ruin a man's life ruin uh, his career without any corroborating evidence whatsoever. You are presumed innocent in this country until proven guilty. And Democrats here want to reverse that and make you try to prove but some type of innocence here. They're saying the process here. was a sham. The FBI oh, did a level of investigation. How do you react to the characterization of that sham process? What's a sham is that the Democrats continue to go after this man and his family and his career.
That's what's a sham here, and they do it time and time again. First it was Russia, then it was racism, then it was recession. They lie about this president consistently, and then they try and rope in people in his orbit. This is a constitutional duty of the president of the United States to put forth a, a, a United States Supreme Court nominee. It went through the process. He was vindicated. He was confirmed. It's time for Democrats to move on. It was a dark time in our nation's history when you saw them attack this man the way they did without evidence, without cause, and it's mm -hmm. got to stop. Corey Lewandowski, the president's former campaign manager, is set to testify uh, before Congress today. What's, what is the expectation of the White House? What happens there? Well, look, that's up to Mr. Lewandowski, as you know, but it's our understanding he will testify before Congress about the public matters that were released in the Mueller uh, investigation. And we don't really have anything further other than to say that private communications between anyone uh, and the president are just that, private, and they are subject to immunity. But Let's see what, sorry, Senator. But the White House did try to prevent him from doing this, right? It's not to my knowledge. One o'clock is the hearing this afternoon. Let's get to guns right now. I don't know when we're going to hear something from the president. First, Joe Manchin, the Democrat from West Virginia, said this just yesterday. We haven't heard from the White House uh, uh, since last week. Waiting to hear from them to see what the staff, his staff, the president's staff is going to recommend to him. We can't even get to first base. A commercial background check is a building block, which I'll call the first base. You can go from there if they want to. But that's what we're talking about today, and that's what we should be talking about because it's doable. So the suggestion yesterday is that Democrats are moving the goalposts. When will we hear from the president of what he will sign into law? Well, we know what Democrats are talking about there, that first base mentioned. Let's talk about the home run, and we saw that on full display the other night when some of the candidates even pushed for gun confiscation. We've been saying for a long time that's all that Democrats want, and we were made fun of as Hicks and Hayseed standing up for a Second Amendment that has seen its time uh, come and go. But the fact is, we have the right to keep and bear arms, and the president has, in fact, talked to the right and the left on this matter. We've been in negotiations. We hope to reveal something to the American people very soon but it should be noted what the week? president wants here what the president wants here is something that actually uh, does some good to protect the American communities and our American families this isn't about feel-good legislation uh, this is about getting something that accomplishes safety and security for the American but people and we is, hope to see that is soon. That this week yes I'm not going to put a timetable on it but we expect the president to be announcing something very soon all right Hogan Gidley live at the White House for us this morning appreciate it thank you thank you for coming back thank here. you so much thank you Hogan